Ryder Pep Band will have to play their hearts out tonight to get Saskatchewan back on a winning track. Riders are reeling after two straight losses and look to end the misery against BC tonight. The Lions bounce back with a huge win in week two over the Edmonton Eskimos, look to get a winning streak of their own going. And Glenn, storm clouds all around Regina. The temperature at 17 degrees, wind southeast at four. We could be in for a wild one before this night is over. BC Lions head coach Wally Buono is in the process of overhauling the Lions. Injuries have been a bit of a problem, so now it is a work in progress. He'll start Dave Dickinson tonight. And Saskatchewan's Danny Barrett thought all the pieces were in place for his Rough Riders to make their Grey Cup run and grab a home playoff date. Suddenly the Riders are down two in the loss column and on their third starting quarterback. It's up to Henry Burris to get it done for Saskatchewan tonight. Worst possible case scenario for Danny Barrett and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They lost their number two quarterback Henry Burris in the preseason to a high ankle sprain and then Basically, first quarter versus Toronto in week one. Nelon Green went down. Burris is back and healthy. And boy, is there pressure on his shoulders tonight to come up with a big performance. But Glenn, he is really relishing it. He wants this opportunity. He wants to be the starting quarterback of this football team. Well, I think as a pro at any position, you want to have that pressure on you. You always say, throw it in my zone. Put the ball in my hands. Henry Burris wants the football. They love him here in Regina, but he's got to start to produce. And we look back to... Henry Burris's last success as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. It's almost four years ago now, back to the 2000 season, when he had all those touchdown passes and was the number one attraction in the province of Saskatchewan. Yeah, and that's been the problem for Burris because in that four years, one start for the Chicago Bears, that's been it for quality reps for Henry Burris in the four-year period, not counting practices, of course. So Burris will have the pressure on him tonight for the Riders. And he relishes the opportunity to be number one in Saskatchewan as he gets his chance here tonight. Paul McCallum is set to kick it off and get another Wendy's Friday night football evening underway. Dante Marsh returning for the Lions. Marsh out across the 35 and dropped in his tracks at the 40-yard line. Stopped by Augustine there. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Tums. Tums tackles heartburn fast. Dave Dickinson starts for the third straight week. He has yet to finish. Casey Printers is waiting in the wings. It's a great receiving core in BC led by all Canadian G. Roy Simon. And one change up front. Marcus McFadden starts for Bobby Singh at right guard. Lions beginning at the 40. Dickinson stands in on target, has his first man. Lyle Green makes the catch, and he's more than halfway to a first down. When your football team's struggling, you got to look to your leaders for that leadership, and they'll look to Nate Davis up front, four years Saskatchewan rougher, rider, longest serving rider on the D line. And then in the secondary, that responsibility falls squarely on the shoulders of Eddie Davis. So the two Davises will be looked at for leadership in that huddle defensively for the Rough Riders tonight. Lyle Green picked up nine yards. This will be second and one, and the heavyweights are along that line for the BC Lions here. Short yardage, it's Casey Printers at quarterback. And his forward motion looked like it might have been enough, but the Riders come over the top. And we'll see where they spot the ball. That was Travis Smith, 48. Talked about Nate Davis being a key for the Saskatchewan defense up front, and he gets a nice surge in the middle, gets pushed, and turns Casey Printers around backwards, so he's facing the opposite direction. Close enough to measure. This is a good move by Wally Buono, though, to put Casey Printers in the game for short yardage and save Dave Dickinson's knee. That's one less hit that Dickinson has to take. It'll be enough for the first down. So Dickinson comes back after the Lions get the first down, just shy of the 50-yard line. BC with a huge win last week over the Eskimos, and the Eskimos drop another one tonight. How about the Ottawa Renegades winning one more time? There was early movements, and the first penalty marker of the night. Dickinson not pleased with himself about that. Well, whoever plays quarterback for the BC Lions, Dave Dickinson or Casey Printers, he, they will have weapons to throw to. Procedure, BC 69, still first down. 
And the first and foremost in that group, G. Roy Simon, who just signed a contract extension with the BC Lions. He's locked in, and G. Roy Simon, 335 yards receiving in two games. Mm -hmm. And if you figure that out over the course of a season, that's a lot of yardage. Three grand. Yeah, prorating that. <laughs> first and 15 for the Lions after the penalty. Dickinson looks to the far side. Oh. One-handed catch, almost grabbed by Jason Claremont. Oh, I thought he had that. Yeah. It was right in the sun. The sun comes off the corner of the stadium here at Taylor Field, and Claremont, who of course has a whole bunch of people in the stands watching him, Regina native, loves to come back here and play in front of his friends and family. He knows this ballpark well. He does, and he gets in behind a little bit right here on Reggie Hunt. I thought he almost had that at the very end of that play, but the ground hit his arm, knocked the ball out of his left hand. So now it's second and 15 for the Lions. Back at the 45. Dickinson shotgun. Won't escape this time. The Riders have him wrapped up. That's been a problem for Saskatchewan. Getting pressure on quarterbacks. Lamont Bryant leading the charge there. Scott Schultz was also celebrating. And they might share that sack. We'll take a closer look. Scott Schultz got a nice push. See Trevor Smith on the outside. He's working that wide so Dickinson can escape to the right. Good push up the middle from Scott Schultz and they meet at the quarterback. Lamont Bryant got there, in first. there as well, yeah. Holmes deep for Saskatchewan on this third down punt for BC. Duncan O'Manny back at his 25. Low snap, digs it out. Barely got it away. There'll be no replay. So Henry Burris gets his chance. Dave Dickinson, first and 10 for the Lions at the 22. Running room is tough for Antonio Warren. Couldn't find any space at all. Nate Davis was there waiting. Reggie Hunt was in the area as well. Antonio Warren just... 15 carries, 59 yards, a 3.9 yard average as a starting tailback, which is new for Antonio Warren. We know what he can do as a returner, kick returner and punt returner. Primarily kick returner, was a Western All-Star with Calgary on special teams, but Wally Buono wants to work him in as a tailback this year. Second and seven. Dickinson flash got it away, and he'll be short of the first down on the completion to Lyle Green. Quick close from Reggie Hunt because Reggie Hunt had opened his hips to go deep. Opened his hips to go deep down in the middle and try and get some depth in his drop. And Hunt right here on the outside. Watch how he opens his hips in this direction and then puts the brakes on and closes in a hurry. Dickinson, he opens his hips. He wants to get deep, get deep, drops his shoulder and comes up in a hurry to close on that football. So the Riders maintain their field position. Oh, man, he's a good one. This is Corey Holmes. Good move by Holmes, and another one. He's out to the 45. This guy is dynamite on special teams, an 18-yard return. Henry Burris getting his opportunity. He knows it's his time. I've been definitely waiting for this, and uh, you know it's definitely something that every player looks forward to is getting that opportunity to be in a situation where, you know, they control their own destiny. And uh, now I'm in that position. First down, Saskatchewan at the 45, slanting in. Jamal Richardson breaks away. This is his biggest play of the year. Jamal Richardson inside the 30. Nice little slant in pattern. And Richardson has the riders rolling. Saskatchewan Rough Riders have not thrown a touchdown pass yet this season. Rocky Butler, Nelon Green, Jamal Richardson almost did all the work to get to that end zone for the first time as a receiver catching the ball in 2004. Tackled from behind. Nice burst of speed down the middle for Jamal Richardson. And a 36 yard gain for Saskatchewan set up just inside the BC 30. Burris, nice fake. 
complete in the flats. Jason French wrapped up immediately. Mook took Benno, the newcomer up front for the BC Lions, number 90, make a, made a nice play there to step up and make Henry Burris throw the football when he really didn't want to. He wanted to get outside the corner. And Tugbeno stopped that from happening. He had to get rid of the ball in a hurry, and that limited the game to about four yards. Jason French has enough to make this second and six. Riders at the line, 25. Definitely in scoring range. Burris over the middle. Down to the five-yard line, Travis Moore. Moore with only five catches coming into this one for 70 yards. He's nice. the go-to guy. Nice read from Travis Moore, who's going to go to the end zone. Linebackers coming up the middle. When the linebackers come, the receiver's got to go right where they just vacated. That's where Travis Moore goes, and Henry Burris makes the exact same read and gets it right through, gets the football right to him. Riders looking at first and goal to go from the five after Moore picks up 20 yards. Elijah Thurman was in the area. Yeah, I think that Henry Burris might have just thrown that away. He, he just threw it well short of Elijah Thurman. It was supposed to be the throw behind, which is allow the receiver to go down the sideline into the end zone. Here's your half field look at it. Watch Elijah Thurman, number 84. He's going to go down. Now, the ball, by design, is going to be thrown to his back hip. But Dante Marsh was right there. I think, I think Burris just threw that one away. Second and goal to go, Rough Riders. At the Lion 5, Burris looks for an opening, takes it himself, he'll score! Henry Burris couldn't find a target, so he took it five yards by himself. Well, they're a desperate team, and right now they're playing with some sense of urgency. Henry Burris with a nice drive down the field. It all starts with Jamal Richardson's catch and run, and then Burris finishes it off. He notices coverage downfield. What a stiff arm on Mark Washington, who comes out of the secondary to try to make the tackle, and Burris just puts his hand right underneath Washington's chin to get into the end zone. Rough Rider fans have been waiting four years to see Henry Burris take control of this football team. And it's 7-0 Saskatchewan. The faces of football on a Wendy's Friday night. We're at Taylor Field, Regina. That means Ray Morrison is on the sideline. John, you know, one thing with Henry Burris, you saw the patience he showed during that last drive. That's one thing that he and offensive coordinator Marcel Belfay have been working on is patience with the football. If Marcel Belfay and Henry Burris have their way, they want to keep the interceptions of single digits this year. Right now, the Riders minus 10 in giveaways, takeaways, and they've got to improve upon that in the next 16 games. Well, minus 10 is horrendous after two games. Six interceptions to zero touchdown passes for Ryder quarterbacks in those two starts. Dante Marsh returning for BC, and he's out at about the 35-yard line, met there by Walter Spencer. This, game, this drive from Henry Burris was called well by Marcel Belfay, the offensive coordinator. It was a five-play drive. And the drive lap went 65 yards, starting with the quick hitch pass to Jamal Richardson. And then Richardson, after the catch, made the big play. Travis Moore with his nice read, 20-yard catch over the middle when the blitz was coming. And they're in the end zone. And Dave Dickinson of the Lions look to respond here inside the 40-yard line. Dickinson looking deep. Claremont was the target. And they say no catch. No, not, not because of Darnell Edwards. Darnell Edwards, that's how you play free safety and play center field. That was a layered pattern from Claremont coming right down the middle like this, and he wants to get in front of Darnell Edwards, who's crossing this way. But watch the close with the ball in the air. He reads the football. Claremont has it in his hands, and Darnell Edwards arrives at the same time to take it out of there. Little heat on Darnell Edwards and the Saskatchewan secondary over the last couple of games. They haven't been quite physical enough. Second and ten. Dickinson stands in. He'll take off, 
And Dickinson will come up with a first down for BC out at the 50. Well, yeah, there is pressure on that secondary because there were very high expectations going in with the Ryder secondary. When you look across the board, it's probably the most veteran group in the Canadian Football League. Darnell Edwards is the youngster with three years of experience, and then you've got the outside guys and Davin Bush, Ladafius McCall, all five years. And not only that, but they played together. One interception for the Riders in two games, that from David Benefield, the rush in. So pressure on this secondary. They expect more out of it. They were talking about two shaky outings. Dickinson picks up 12, first down BC. Near the 50. He's got time. Escapes again and takes off again. Back to back rushes for first downs. Eddie Davis got to Dave Dickinson that time. This has got to be keeping Wally Buono a little bit nervous on that sideline because last week Dave Dickinson as he ran outside of the pocket versus Edmonton in what was a shootout he grabs his knee after that throw there's when he's going to the outside you can see him limping it, it just starts to wear down and the fatigue kicks in on Dickinson on that knee and I'm sure Wally Buono does not like to see him running the football he has a first down their side one handed catch Ryan Thelwell for about three yards. Santino Hall, the newcomer in the linebacking core for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, tried to time his jump and went up to knock that ball down from Dave Dickinson and ended up landing right on his lap. Coming off the edge, watch number 18. He jumps, he's in the air now. If that's a late hit on the quarterback, it is. that's a big surprise because I'll tell you why, he was in the air when before the ball was thrown. There's no way he could have stopped his forward momentum. I don't think that's a penalty. Well, they have called it a penalty. Net gain for BC, 19 yards. Ball was still in Dickinson's hand when he left his feet, and there is no way once you're in the air you can slow down your forward progress. It'll be a first down for the Lions at the Saskatchewan 29. And the rider faithful hate the call. I don't blame him on that one. Dickinson <laughs> shotgun. With time, fell well again. Couldn't hang on this time. That was Reggie Hunt coming up and making a play on the pass receiver. Yeah, he's been closing in a hurry, Reggie Hunt. He's missed his partner, Jackie Mitchell, all Canadian and number one defensive player on the Saskatchewan team last year. It changes the way they have to play things with Mitchell out of there. Yeah, and that's why Santino Hall is playing Jackie Mitchell out. We saw Hall with that last penalty. Second and ten Lions. Riders lead it by seven on an impressive touchdown drive by Henry Burris. Second and ten, and nobody around. Jason Claremont has been the intended target on three occasions. Scott Gordon comes in as a nickel defensive back for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Claremont is the intended target over the middle, and Scott Gordon one-on-one -on -one with Claremont and right in his hip pocket. Now the adventure begins for the BC Lions. Duncan O'Manny in for a field goal try. They'll spot it at the 36. O'Manny has not had great success so far this season. Good on two of five, 40 percent. 0 for two, game one versus Hamilton. O'Manny hammers it. And he puts it wide. Chance for a return. No, the Riders give up the single point as McCalla goes down. Saskatchewan hangs on to the lead. It's 7-1. First down, BC. Antonio Warren. Featured back for the Lions this year. 15 carries, 59 yards. Well, here's why Wally Buono thinks that Antonio Warren can be the starting tailback back in college at Cal Poly in California. Antonio Warren had two 2,000 yard rushing seasons in college, and Wally Buono, of course, has seen some of that game tape. And he's watched him as a Calgary Stampeder. Mm -hmm. He's a special team player a couple of years ago. So Antonio Warren gets a chance to be a starting running back at BC. Printers at quarterback on second and one, and this will be close. Warren. Well, close enough, John, that the BC Lions will likely leave Casey Printers in the game if they don't get it and it goes to third down and just go ahead and have Casey Printers fall forward. 
It was a long yard necessary. This plants a seed in the BC Lions minds the way the Saskatchewan defense is playing in short yardage. That's twice now. Remember the last time they went Casey Printers tried the quarterback sneak got turned back and barely made the first town down. This time they're about a yard short and that has already planted a seed because Wally Guano sitting on the punt team. Well it's it's third down and a yard to go. He has to kick it here I would think early in the game. On the Lions side of midfield and that's that was probably the determining factor the fact that they are on their own side of midfield. I want to give Saskatchewan that kind of field position and the way they've been playing short yardage defense. Oh man he averaging 43 yards of putts. This is another nice one. Corey Holmes wrapped up in a hurry at the 30 yard line by Martavius Houston. That's the end of quarter one with the Riders hanging on to a six point lead. John Wells and Glenn Suter back at Taylor Field looking at the numbers through one quarter. Four first downs for the Lions. Any team quarterback by Dave Dickinson, that's that's a surprising number after a quarter. Just 19 yards passing for Dickinson. Got to credit the Saskatchewan secondary that's been challenged this week and so far so good for that group. Second quarter begins with a Saskatchewan first down at the 30. Chris, quick release, it's Holmes sliding out of the backfield. This guy is a three-dimensional player, no doubt about it. Baron Simpson got over to make the tackle. Corey Holmes has been the workhorse in two games for Saskatchewan. 147 yards rushing, 83 yards passing. That leads the team in both categories. And then the arrival of Kenton Keith. And he loses his job. Well, he does because Kenton Keith had 700 yards rushing in just 10 games last year. He's the starting tailback, but it'll keep... Corey Holmes fresh on the sideline for special teams and plays like the one you just saw. And up for a first down, Burris stands in a little high. And Kenton Keith couldn't bring it down, but he got a hand on it. And that might have saved an interception there. Rookie nominee Kenton Keith last year went down to the National Football League. Everyone felt that he would actually make the roster down there. Never worked out for him. Very political at times in the NFL. 709 yards rushing a seven yard average when you have a seven yard average you got to get him in the lineup yeah the good news for Kenton Keith is he comes from the New York Jets so he doesn't even have to change his socks <laughs> first down or second down Travis Moore makes the catch and the spot will be important to Saskatchewan here Travis Moore thought he had forward progress at least another yard and a half that was a nice throw from Henry Burris probably his most confident throw We'll see right where Travis Moore catches that football. It's just, well, it's about a yard under the sea. He stretches forward, and, and the ball was brought back to make it third and a long yard. Yeah, I think it was pretty good defense myself. Well, you get your forward progress unless you're the one who brings yourself back to the football. If you get pushed back, mm -hmm. then it's marked at forward progress. If you take a step back on your own, it's marked right there. McCallum. His best punt sailing into the end zone. It goes well over Warren's head and trickles right through. Paul McCallum booms one. It's a 78 yard single. And first and 10. Warren ex escapes for his biggest gain of the night off right tackle. Antonio Warren. Pretty good blocking up front for Antonio Warren. Really wasn't hit till he got into the next level. There he is right there, a little delayed draw. Dave Dickinson in the shotgun gives him the draw. Look at the block. Good kick out block there by Marcus McFadden, who's in for the injured Bobby Singh, comes across and takes out Scott Schultz, the defensive line. First down, BC. Oh, boy. Dickinson is down, wrapped up. Well, they did. Nate Davis, who's had a good game already, and this Rough Rider defense is showing an awful lot more than a week ago. Well, that run must have made some of those guys up front a little angry from Antonio Warren because this time Davis with a good push, and he is not to be denied from Kelly Bates. He just could not handle him on the left side and was right in the face of Dave Dickinson. Ten sacks, which led the Riders 
a year ago for Nate Davis. He has two now in this season. Loss of seven. Dickinson looks at second and 17. Nice toss, wide open target. He's got him. Brazel, a race to the end zone. He makes it. Chris Brazel has the touchdown on second and 17. Dave Dickinson, a 68-yard strike. And Dickinson is hit right in the legs as he throws the football because Dave Dickinson has to hang on a split second. Blitz coming right there from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and Trevis Smith, 48. He's on the blitz as well. Dickinson has to hang in there so Chris Brazel can get open. He finally does. Dickinson takes a hit. Brazel takes it in. First major of the night for the BC Lions, and that quiets the crowd at Taylor Field just a little bit. Chris Brazel's second touchdown of the season. Converted by Duncan O'Manny. And it's all even on a Wendy's Friday night. Dave Dickinson on the BC Lions bench. That knee being tended to down there. Here's a good look at it. Scott Schultz driving down the middle is going to fall right into the legs of Dickinson. He went over there on the bench and took that brace off. Watch Brazel with the nice outside fake right there. Good head fake to that direction. Go back into the middle and is wide open. But it took him a second to get there, and that's why Dickinson took the hit on the other end. Brazel with a 68-yard touchdown to get things even. Here's the kickoff. Back to the 10-yard line. Taken by Corey Holm. Solid on special teams. Corey Holmes met by Kelly Lockbaum. And now some will wonder if playing Dave Dickinson with the knee problem this early in the season is foolhardy. Well, it's been talked about all season long for the Lions and whether or not he should be in there at all. But Wally Buono basically asked the training staff. He asked Dave. Dave says... He feels like he wants to go. The training staff says he can't hurt it any worse unless, of course, you take a hit on it like Dave did on that last play. But the reason it's been talked about is because of the play of Casey Printers. He's been brilliant so far in relief. Dickinson has started all three games for the Lions. Printers has come in and played well in the first two. Well, Casey Printers, two games now that he's played in, 73.2%. He's completed 552 yards, thrown four touchdowns, and not one interception. He'll get an opportunity, but right now it's Henry Burris with his opportunity. Connecting with Elijah Thurman, who's made a couple of catches in this one tonight. Thurman with only three in the first two games. He gets the spot vacated by Matt Dominguez, who headed to the National Football League after last season. Well, in fairness to Elijah Thurman and the rest of this receiving core, Rocky Butler struggled in his first start in game two, did a lot of running, not a whole lot of passing. So none of the receivers have really been as productive as the riders hope they will be. Second and one, Jamal Richardson. Flank right to the near side. Straight ahead, it'll be close. Kenton Keith got the call. And the spot important to Saskatchewan here. Keith figures he has enough for the first down. Both we'll panic at the rider bench. Both, or is there? Both teams' defensive lines playing very well in short yardage situations. Kenton Keith didn't get enough no, yards. And they're going to send on the punt team. So Brett Johnson does a nice job in the middle of that last play. And, and we've seen Nate Davis with some plays when the riders are on defense. McCallum sailed a 78-yarder the last time. This is well struck. Two. Patolo wrapped up after a three-yard game, leading the tacklers. Sanyika. So let's get the latest from the BC bench, Lee. Yeah, guys, it uh, looks like he twisted his knee. That's the early indications by the BC trainers. Uh, they we're going to see if he could go, but right now he's on the bike and doesn't look like he's going out. Printers is off to the huddle. Back to you guys. Well, yeah, it was a good sign, too, when they took a bad sign, I should say, for the Lions. Good sign that he wasn't coming back when they take the brace right off the knee. We talked about the numbers that Casey Printers has put up. When called upon for the Lions, he has one win. Get up, 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 up. 
Thelwell makes the catch, knocking off the Eskimos last week. Dickinson started the game, and Printers came in to finish it. The difference for Casey Printers this year, as opposed to last season with the BC Lions, is very simple. He just approached the game mentally different in the offseason that he has as a pro. And what that means is just watching all kinds of films, sitting down with the coaching staff, talking about the passing game and what they're trying to accomplish. And he's come out playing at another level. Thelwell has seven. This is second and three. Antonio Warren turns it into something. He was stopped initially, but escaped. And he'll likely have enough for the first down. It is a first down for the Lions. Well, partner, I know it's early, but this is Friday night, so it's gladiator night, and I'm liking so far early in this game defensive line play. Antonio Warren really had to work for the extra yards to get that one, but there's some defensive linemen getting it done right now, playing some hard-nosed football up front. A little early for the gladiator. Well, it's... Oh, it's, you're just nominating. I'm just nominating right now. Okay. Lions first down. Casey Printers at the controls. On the money, G. Roy Simon. He's got a first down. Simon in across the 40 and dropped at about the 35. Caught by Eddie Davis. This guy has been sensational this season as well as last. 2003 was the first year over 1,000 for G. Roy Simon. Started his career in Winnipeg. Spent some time in the National Football League as well. But personal best season for him last year, over 1,600 yards, 1,687 to be exact. 13 touchdowns, got a fat new contract, and is locked in for a couple years with the Lions. First down, D.C. a one hopper. Pizzolo was the intended target there. Yeah, Nate Davis was there too. And Nate Davis changed the throwing motion from Casey Printers. That's an easy one, two, three throw for Casey Printers, and Catola should have no problem with that one, unless, of course, you have three big Nate Davis coming down on you six foot five that could change your throwing motion a whole lot of other things as you're trying to get rid of that football two changes along the defensive line for Saskatchewan this year David Benefield coming over from Winnipeg Lamont Bryant from Hamilton Casey Printer stands in hit as he throws Bellwall was the target and the coverage was too close no flags no catch Davin Bush was back with him. Davin Bush dropped into the outside zone. He knew he had Reggie Hunt, who had dropped from the linebacking core. There's Reggie Hunt right there. He's in the middle of the field. And look how Davin Bush has fallen off into that outside zone, times his jump perfectly, and almost looked like he tried to tip it to Reggie Hunt. Printers again had pressure from the front four. This time, it's Scott Schultz's turn. He was hit as he... Released the football, thus it was a little short. Here's Duncan O'Manny. Missed his first try. And he's 0 for 2. McCalla will give up another point. So the kicking problems continue for the BC Lions. That starts to get demoralizing for a team. First and ten, Riders at the 35. Nice fake. Travis Moore makes the catch. Henry Burris. Remember, we talked about Mook Tugbeno from this side. He's been very disciplined staying up field. Well, watch Brent Johnson get sucked in here on the play action. It's the opposite side of the field. Look how 97 flows right to the running back. That allows Henry Burris outside for the big completion. Tugbeno has stopped it on his end. Brent Johnson got, he was sold down the farm on his end. Travis Moore has it up for the first down. Kenton Keith gets the call here. Yeah, Looked that, to be a little bit shaken up after making the catch. And that's a, that's a good call to go right back to Kenton Keith in the middle this time. Now, what Marcel Belfay is trying to do with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders is keep those ends guessing. If they stay up field and stay straight, trying to contain Henry Burris, he'll run in the soft spots in the middle. If Brent Johnson starts flying down in the middle, you'll see more of Henry Burris going to the outside. A little bit of the game inside the game that's going on right now. The game is three. Go! Green 80! Green 80! Run! Second and seven, Burris looks deep. He's got a target. Elijah Thurman. 
And, and Henry Burris gains confidence with every throw. That time after he completed that pass to Elijah Thurman, he ran over to find anybody he could to celebrate with. It ended up being offensive lineman. Nice job of Burris getting outside of containment. Straight drop back, but now he's going to buy a little more time. Thurman gets a couple of seconds to get open, times his jump down the sideline. Watch Thurman, little outside move down the sideline. Dante Marsh lets him go and then is just watching the football way too long. A 40-yard gain, and Burris gets confidence in his rookie receiver, too. Kenton Keith on right tackle. Well, this is one of the things as a rookie, Dante Marsh is going to struggle through, and he had a tough outing in game one versus Hamilton. That time, Elijah Thurman went around him down the sideline. Dante Marsh, he stopped, looked back at the football, and was looking at Henry Burris the entire time. If you don't have the receiver under control, then watching the football is not going to help you. All you'll do is see it go over your head. That's what happened One of to two Dante rookie Marsh. corners for the Lions. Sam Young on the other side. Second and five. Rough Riders can get a first down without getting to the end zone. It opens up for Henry Burris. He's run for one, and he's thrown for another. Touchdown, Saskatchewan. Jamal Richardson. First touchdown pass by a Ryder quarterback in 2004. Henry Burris has thrown one and run one in now. That was Burris at his best, buying a little extra time. Well, and it was a lot, John, and because you can't cover that long. Dante Marsh may have been beat on the long one to Elijah Thurman. Marsh was the victim again, but not 10-year veteran corners in the CFL can cover that long. Sooner or later, someone is going to open up. That's Henry Burris using his legs to buy time and find an open receiver. Nine-yard touchdown toss. Jamal Richardson celebrating his first reception, and Henry Burris celebrates his first touchdown throw. Coming into this game, Jamal Richardson, eight catches for 66 yards. That was his first touchdown. A couple of big plays by Richardson in this one tonight. Yeah, he had that big run early in the first quarter on a little hitch pass. 36 yards there, has the touchdown. Got in behind Dante Marsh, but because of the time that Henry Burris had bought himself, he had more time to work his pattern and get open. Down at the 10. Dante Marsh. Wrapped up at about the 32. Reggie Hunt leading the tacklers there. The return is 22, and we'll see what Casey Printers can do with the BC offense this time. He's in in relief of Dave Dickinson, who engineered the first touchdown for BC. Chris Brazo catch on the blitz from the BC Lions, but on the play, he was hitting the legs and has been on the sideline since. So it's Casey Printers at least till the next half. They'll take a closer look at Dickinson at the intermission. 4.06 until we get there. Antonio Warren. Travis Smith was one of several Rough Riders waiting for him. Take a quick look down in the field, and Scott Schultz is not in the lineup. Say he has injured his leg. And there's Scott Schultz with his helmet. In his hand. Three yard gain, second and seven Lions. Printers avoids the first rush, finds Claremont. That's a huge catch for Jason Claremont, the Regina native who grew up watching and playing football here at Taylor Field. Yeah, and when Scott Schultz goes out, the Riders go with a different defensive set, three down linemen, four linebackers, and Printers again. Now he's taking a page out of Henry Burris's book and, and trying to work to the outside, find a little time, get outside of pressure, then step up, and there's Jason Claremont. Nice catch over the middle, knowing he's gonna get hit. That'll make Dad, Dad proud. There's Dad. There's Dad, and Mom. 25-yard gain for Claremont. Printers has the Lions on the move. Another catch, another strike. Brazel. Chris Brazel making the catch. He had the touchdown earlier. Three minutes to halftime. The Lions are on a nice little roll. Trailing Saskatchewan 15-9. 
Three receivers near side. A second and a couple. Little shovel pass. This will work well. Oh, what a move. And that's why he's back in the Rough Rider lineup. Kenton Keith has all the moves and he has speed to boot. Huge play for Saskatchewan in the dying moments of the opening half. That gives him a chance possibly at the major. First thing is patience from Henry Burrs to the outside. Burrs takes his time allowing this to develop. He make, waits till Baron Simpson, 51, commits to the run, then goes backwards. Look at that move in the open field on Martavius Houston. Well, that's where you got to go pick up your spot. <laughs> 28 yards for number 28. First down, Saskatchewan. Open target again. They're saying no. Saying that one was dropped. Jason French. We got to see this move one more time. The spat is the tape that the players will put over their shoe to make the shoe as one with the foot. And look at that. That's the kind of move that'll break that spat wide open. Martavius Houston has to go back and spat up again. He did kind of slow him down a little bit, and I've been in that situation. It's not easy because it's you, a talented running back, and a whole bunch of field on each side. Numbers on Burris so far, 13 of 19, 212 in the touchdown we talked about. This is second and 10. Looked like early movement, and yes, the flags come down. Burris one-hopped it near the 40-yard line, and Corey Holmes was the intended receiver there. Holmes moving into a receiving Spot with the Rough Riders after starting the first two games of the year as the running back. Yeah, and you, you just don't want Corey Holmes, as talented as he is and can catch the ball Outside, well. BC 51, second down repeated. You just don't want Corey Holmes, your leading receiver. No, not, and, not and in that's, this package. Yeah, and, and that's what he was after two weeks. And now Henry Burris in the lineup, a healthy Henry Burris in the lineup, is now spreading the ball around. He's getting the ball to Kenton Keith back in the lineup again. The receivers are now seeing the football a little more. Second and five, Burris, quick release. He'll get a first down out of this. Elijah Thurman has been part of this offense for you know, Saskatchewan and for Burris tonight. And I think the big difference for Henry Burris, as opposed to Rocky Butler last week, is that Henry Burris can confidently throw the ball to the wide side of the field and can use the wide receivers. Elijah Thurman and Jamal Richardson has been, have been very involved in this offense from start to right now. And Rocky Butler was struggling throwing the ball to the wide receivers. It spreads out the defense completely if you can use them. First down, Rough Riders. 45 seconds, they'll have time. Got him, got him. Confident Burris stands oh. in and has Thurman again. That was a bullet. That was a dart. Dante Marsh making the tackle. And the Riders move the sticks in four seconds. You know, you just have to remind the folks of the pressure on Henry Burris to start this football game. All the fans hoping he could find that form of 2,000 when he threw for over 4,600 yards, and it looks like he's coming back. But he put a lot of that pressure on himself, wanting this job as desperately as he did. And he's playing with great confidence here tonight. He's run for a couple. Little shovel pass. Was he over the line or not? Corey Grant makes the catch. John, you, you mentioned it just before that call, his confidence level. That's the kind of play to Corey Grant, is, which is a great illustration of how high that confidence is all of a sudden for Henry Burris because he has the composure and vision as he steps up into the pocket here, the composure to find Corey Grant and just flip it sideways to him and then out goes Corey Grant around the corner. It saves a hit on Burris, good awareness of where his players are on the field, and a, shot, and a sign of confidence. And more importantly, a 16-yard gain to give the Riders three cracks at it from inside the 10 here with 19 seconds till halftime. Here's Burris. First crack at it, tosses for the touchdown. He's got it. Jason French made the catch. Heavy traffic down there. And French hangs on for the touchdown. 13 seconds till the half. And Henry Burris, who can run the football effectively, is not really running it a lot, but what he's doing is moving the pocket slightly. Watch Burris drop straight back. Now he moves the pocket up, steps up, steps to the right, and threads the needle between Otis Floyd and the defensive back on the play coming across. I thought it was Deshaun Austin. 
Well, Otis Floyd didn't miss getting Not fingers on that ball by very much coming across. And right into Jason French. Again, the word that comes to mind with all that pressure on Henry Burr is his composure. Pocket starting to break down. Steps up, moves to the right, and has the confidence to throw it under Otis Floyd's hands. I correct I'll correct myself there. It was actually Derek Lewis coming across from the linebacker, not Deshaun Austin. Either way, Jason French finds a little opening, and Henry Burris threads the needle. Jason French, first touchdown catch of the season, and the Riders would appear ready to take the lead to the dressing room at halftime. However, 13 seconds remain on the clock. I wonder if Henry Burris is a fly fisherman because he looked like he was tying a fly the way he threw that thing through the eye of that needle. Fishing line in there, that's it's not easy, especially for grandpas. <laughs> but that one didn't have much room and Burris put it in there. And he's on pace for a 500 yard game. Zero interceptions so far for Henry Burris. No real mistakes. A couple of throws behind the target early in the game, but that has disappeared. And Wally Buono really has to address a problem on the defensive side of the football at halftime. Jason French's touchdown puts the Rough Riders in the lead, and the Lions are out near the 35 with seven seconds on the clock. G. Roy Simon there. That's what Wally Buono will do at halftime is address his defense. Last in the league versus the pass after two games, giving up 486.5 yards per game. Way too much on defense, and he can't expect his offense to stay, keep pace in these games, game in and game out. Sooner or later, he needs a couple of stops defensively. I'm sure that's what he talks about at halftime. Last sequence, opening half, just seven seconds on the clock. Brenners will try and make something happen here. Cotolo down the side, grabbed from behind. Zeros are up, no penalty markers anywhere. Hey, an entertaining first half. Really was, and it looks like it's going to be a shootout in the second half. Which team has the ball last may win this one. The Riders look a lot different as they take on the BC Lions on Wendy's Friday Night Football from Regina. It looks like we're headed to And many people's dreams of owning a home what's keeping you up at night. I'm kind of stressed about uh, my money situation. Oh, it's stressful to talk about. Oscar, come here. Here's your financial stress companion. She definitely helps. It's never too late to start. Good portfolio. I quit saving for my first down payment. Allergens, viruses, <laughs> bacteria. Dangers to your breathing. Get My Pure Mist Ultra Pure Steam Inhaler. Boom, it's on. Germs destroyed, droplets and allergens terminated in their tracks. Pure effective steam making your sinuses happy. Whoa, breathing again. More than 1,000 five stars on Amazon. So approved by you. Many of my patients have told me that this is the most effective form of humidification that they've ever experienced. Nine out of 10 users get instant symptom relief from sinus congestion, allergies, sinus pain, colds, and flu. This has been my best friend. I bring with me everywhere. Press on and soothing perfectly warm steam is instant and never scalding. My Pure Mist was amazing for my allergies. I can finally breathe and sleep again. I just love it. My Pure Mist, the best thing to happen to breathing, period. And yeah, Amazon and Bed Bath & Beyond have it. Do it. Why is everyone talking about navage and nasal irrigation? I am one who suffers from chronic sinus infection. You need to clean that crap out of your nose. Navage is simple. Your nose is the body's air filter, but it's not perfect. Navage is a drug-free way to help flush out allergens, mucus, and germs using powered suction. Join nearly 3 million Navage users so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier. I love this thing. It's nice to breathe. Navage, clean nose, healthy life. Corey Holmes returning for Saskatchewan. Riders will begin near the 40-yard line. Well, no doubt about it, Glenn, this is a quarterback's league. It's a receiver's game, and that puts huge pressure on those defensive backs. Especially when they're young, and right now Henry Burris is going after the young secondary a little bit. He's worked on Dante Marsh, 
on the outside. Had Elijah Thurman in behind him. Jamal Richardson's had some success. Derek Lewis has moved up to the linebacking core, so he's sort of out of that process as far as covering one-on-one -on -one a whole bunch. And the problem with the Lions, when you look at those kind of numbers, a lot of new faces in new places back there. That's right. And, and the guy you saw is one of those. <laughs> Bo Lewis, not a new face, John, but a new face to that position, moving to linebacker. Corey Holmes is in as our running back. We knew we'd see a little bit of that. He started the season as the number one gun coming out of the backfield for the Rough Riders. Well, you heard the panel talk at halftime about, about the receivers and the yardage that's racked up and, and the, the fact that the defenses are having trouble stopping these receiving cores in the CFL. This is a league trend, not just the BC Lions that have had some problems in their secondary. On second down, nice catch, nice toss from Burris. And Jason French, who had a touchdown earlier, comes up with another big play. That was second down and five to go, Saskatchewan. When you take a look at this league trend, John, the receivers, if you take every team in the league, all nine of them, two receivers, two slots, running back, 241 years of experience versus 181 in the defensive secondaries, a difference of 60 years experience across the board. Now you have Dante Marsh, rookie on one side, go, Sam go, Young, rookie on the other side. Henry Burris looking his chops across the other side of the line. And Keith for a yard. And then you add one other little element to that. Those receivers know where they want to go. Well, that's right. And, and, and as a defensive back, you're reacting. And that's where the experience comes in because you've seen the receivers run their routes over and over again over a couple of years. You know what they're capable of. You know what they like to do. For Dante Marsh and Sam Young, they're learning for the first time. It just happens to be a trend in the entire CFL. Not many secondaries. One here in Regina, one in Toronto. Other than that, a lot of rookies across the board. And not many teams in this league plan to run the football a great deal. Burris on second and nine. Just about connecting with Jason French again. The crowd wanted an interference call from Artavius Houston. I thought he timed it up pretty good. There's one of the veterans that the Lions do have back there, and he's playing free safety. But again, a new position for Martavius Houston. Played linebacker last year. You see the timing as he goes and just cuts the feet out of Jason French as the ball arrives. But there's one of the veterans that the Lions have to look to. McCallum. Down to about the 10. Antonio Warren. Out across the 25, stopped at the 27. First and 10, BC, when we return to Taylor Field. When Payne says, it's time to go home, I say, not yet. Aleve, who do you take it for? Casey Printers throwing on the run. He's on the money for Chris Brazel who has a touchdown, a long one. Reggie Hunt up to make the tackle. Brazel's touchdown. That was a tough throw from Casey Printers, and he made it look easy. He was rolling full to his right and threw it all the way across his body, and quarterbacks will tell you that that's a tough throw to make when you're running right, but he's got the great targets out there. Chris Brazel already has a touchdown, one of his two on the season, and look at the numbers that that receiving core is racking up for the BC Lions. Brazel's touchdown tonight, 68 yards. The toss from Dickinson. Nice play action fake, the shovel pass. Well read, Antonio Warren had nowhere to go. Travis Smith was there and waiting. Casey Printers had two options. He, he had Jason Claremont coming out of the backfield. That was one option, and then he had Warren behind. There's Claremont there. He's going to be outside, and then in behind that in the second layer is Antonio Warren. Claremont was probably the better choice. A couple of riders right there to stop Antonio Warren. Had Casey Printers taken another three steps, he had Claremont on the sideline. Second and eight, BC at the Lions, 45. Printers hammered, ball is loose, the Riders have it. Matt Davis, Nate Davis, recovers the fumble created down there. 
Nate Davis gets the pressure because Scott Schultz right in here is going to take a double team and take one for his teammates. Watch Scott Schultz. Remember, he was injured in the first half. He takes the double team. Now it's one-on-one -on -one for everybody else. Free man off the edge. I think Santonio Hall created the fumble there. Yeah, here comes, there's Hall there off the go. edge. He, he gets there first. Nate Davis with a push up the middle. He gets the football all because Scott Schultz, in a gutsy effort, takes a double team up the middle. <laughs> Riders first down at the oh. 45. Burris is surrounded and smothered there. Lions came with the big charge. Brent Johnson leading the way. Yeah, Wally Buono's answer is, is when he talks about pressure, is number 51. And Brent Johnson came in and he got the pressure, but that was because he got a little help from Baron Simpson. And if Wally Buono wants to keep sending Baron Simpson on pass rush to get a little more help in that area, what he does is he takes the gamble that he opens up the middle for the hot pass game for Henry Burris to just dump the ball off. It's a little give and take going on right now for Wally Buono. Loss of eight, second and 18, Saskatchewan. Burris unloads in a hurry. The defender thrown down, it's complete. Jamal Richardson. Sean Austin slipped on the outside, playing his own defense. He was the underneath man, tried to break back on it. That was a tough catch for Jamal Richardson. Had to turn around to make it, but he gets the first down, a 21-yard gain. Richardson's the top guy. Now watch it. He's going to sit down. He sees the zone. There's Deshaun Austin right there. He falls. And that was a tough catch to make for Jamal Richardson. You're right. Almost he almost crawl, crawling turn back right to the ball. right back and crawl back to the, yeah. this. This field is soaking wet from that early thunder and lightning storm. Brent, 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 At the Brent. Lions, 23. First down, Saskatchewan. Burris. Has Travis Moore. Moore is inside the 10. This time, Bo Lewis slipped. And he went down. When the defense that we mentioned earlier have to wait and then react to the left of your screen, you're going to see Derek Lewis, number 17, have to get up. So he gets up off the top, right behind the goal post. He had slipped trying to break to the outside. That's why Travis Moore is wide open. Hey, 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 hey. Rough Riders in the lead by 6 of 22 to 16. Threatening to add to that here. Three cracks at it from just outside the five. Nice play action fake. Burris looks to the end zone. Threw it away. And that fooled everyone down there. Yeah, well, you had Jason French and, and Corey Grant over there and Jamal Richardson on the same side of the field, and they were all pretty close. I don't think that was design of the play. Usually receivers are trying to spread out and use the field. They were all pretty close in that little corner, and I think Henry Burris just threw it away. Had he given it to Corey Holmes in the original fake, that, that... Corey Holmes probably walks in. That fake that fooled a lot. Second and goal to go. Saskatchewan at the BC6. First with time. There's the touchdown toss. He's got it. And Keith is back. Henry Burris. Cool as a cucumber down there. Fumble sets it up. You talked about the give and take Wally Guano had to go through. Watch, Baron Simpson right here. He's got to come outside. If you're going to send Baron Simpson, then who covers the back out of the backfield? Baron Simpson and Derek Lewis caught inside. Nobody covers Kenton Keith. Easy touchdown for the Riders outside. Six yard toss from Henry Burris. He's fired a couple tonight and run for one himself. Wendy's Friday Night Football, the faces of Friday Night. Since the dawn of game, a rivalry has divided men, and Team Styled chooses King C. Gillette, a full line of beard care tools to get the perfect look. Satisfaction guaranteed. Choose your game face. Kenton Keith has his first touchdown of 2004. He ran for six last year. And cut passes for three more. And was not covered on the play. Both linebackers, Derek Lewis and Baron Simpson, caught up in the mix. And that allowed Ken Keith to the outside, but you still have to execute it. And you still have to get him the football. And Henry Burris has looked very good in this football game. And that was second and six. Mm -hmm. G. Roy Simon. 
slowed at the 30 yard line and dropped at the 31. So Casey Printers gets his opportunity to respond after an impressive drive by Burris following the fumble. Well, uh, now the Saskatchewan Rough Rider defense for the first time really this season is now able to play with the lead. So Wally Buono has to have Casey Printers with a face a defense that's fired up and playing with more confidence than they have all year long. On first down. Printers can't spot a target to his left. Just got it away. Jump ball. Brazzle. Couldn't get it. Darnell Edwards was covering him. Well, the effort from this Saskatchewan defensive line, Brazel hurt on the play. He has not got up. That was Edwards again. You mentioned him. But the play of this defensive line for Saskatchewan is they have been the ones that, that have taken on the leadership role. Nate Davis one, Scott Schultz the other. Perhaps the most disappointing aspect of the Rough Riders' loss to the Stampeders was the play of the defense. Well, they've, they've stepped up their game now. You mentioned Darnell Edwards. That's a couple for him from the free safety spot on the knockdowns. But I have just been real impressed with the play of Scott Schultz and Nate Davis. They have caused all kinds of problems up front. And Scott Schultz playing on a bad leg. He's had to suck it up and come back in there. And he's demanding the double team even though he only has one leg to run on. Which is the bothersome leg? Can you tell from here? You can't let him see you sweat. There's big Nate Davis. He gets a, a bit of a rest. And, and Scott Schultz is just going to gut this one out. Three Chris sacks Brazel. to start the season. Sorry, John. And there's Brazel. Yeah, he was injured trying to make that reception. I'm betting he'll be back. Hit his funny ball. Nothing funny about it either. Second and ten for Casey Printers and the BC Lions here. Just over seven minutes left in the third quarter. Printer stands in and fires, picked off. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Lions, Eddie Davis. And this is a fired-up Saskatchewan team in all phases of football. John, right in the beginning, the starting lineups felt like Eddie Davis and Nate Davis had to be the two Davises that would lead by example. Well, we've seen a lot of Nate Davis rushing the quarterback. He was taking a breather here. You're going to see Lamont Bryan get pressure there. And watch Eddie Davis just jump this. Again, that pocket collapsed on Casey Printers in a hurry. And when it does, that's when the defensive secondary can now take their chances, cut underneath the ball rather than playing safe. Eddie Davis does that and has a big interception. Riders capitalized on the previous turnover. 25-yard return for Davis sets up Saskatchewan inside the 20. Burris has time, lobs it. Otis and a flag Floyd. comes down on Otis Floyd. Yeah, and that's a good call because Otis Floyd had his hands all over the shirt of Kenton Keith and would not let him go. Big difference right now for Saskatchewan. They came into this game minus 10 in the giveaway takeaway category, which is just god awful. awful. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's after two games, and that's changed around in a hurry. I mean, when you take a look at what they did after two games, pass interference, two takeaways, 12 giveaways coming into this one. Quarterbacks had thrown six interceptions, zero touchdowns. All that has changed tonight. Well, two turnovers going Saskatchewan's way, but when you start at minus 10 after two games, it's a long way back to the middle of the pack, isn't it? Oh, baby steps. Baby steps. Uh oh. Burris wisely <laughs> jumps on the ball and avoids a turnover there, <laughs> losing seven. That was almost a giveaway. They've turned it around, and they don't want to stop that trend right now in this game, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Henry Burris, the downside of the shotgun formation for quarterback is that he has to take his eyes off the coverage to look at the football, and if he keeps his eyes on the coverage a little too long, the football can surprise him. I think that's what happened to Burris. Smiling Hank, nothing. If not a confident football player and obviously excited to have this opportunity to run the Ryder offense tonight. Shotgun after losing seven. Burris stands in and fires a touchdown. Elijah Thurman found the corner of the end zone. Second and a bunch again.
They tried it in the first half. Elijah Thurman in the throw behind, and the ball was too far behind. A design pass, and what you do is you throw it right behind the receiver so that he's flying down the sideline, slams on the brakes, and the defensive back flies right by. Elijah Thurman right down here, and guess what? He's working on Dante Marsh one more time. Little inside, now he's back to the out. Now watch, the ball comes to his back hip. And right there, light, little push off on Dante Marsh, who will not get that call, especially because he's a rookie. Touchdown, Riders. After losing six on the previous play, Burris stands in on second down and fires another strike for a touchdown. The Riders are walking away on Wendy's Friday night. When Payne says, it's time to go home, I say, not yet. Aleve, who do you take it for? In the prairie sky, a little ominous surrounding Taylor Field tonight. We had a huge storm earlier. Sky's the limit in the Skins game. So. Sky's the limit. Critters has G. Roy Simon. A couple of plays made by the rookie Santonio Hall. Yeah, he's he's been flying around getting his chance to play. Santonio. Santonio Hall had that call that was really shouldn't have been a call early in the game on Dave Dickinson when he left his feet. Later he created the fumble. Created that fumble. And that and set up a touchdown. Hustled over there for a nice tackle and the chance to play for Perry in the lineup. And he limits the game to zero. Riders with more pressure. Ritter stands up. Simon will have a first down. And it's been a while since G. Roy Simon escaped with substantial yardage. Well, if you want to get your team back in the game, you go to 81 if you're the BC Lions. Because G. Roy Simon is, is your go-to receiver, and, and he's the guy that you got to look for. The average is unbelievable for G. Roy Simon. 14 catches. Every time he catches the ball, around 24 yards. And coming off a career year last season, picking up 26 there. Brother stands in and was well over the head of G. Roy Simon that time. Yeah, and that time Printer's kind of locked in. It's it, you know, and I say you go to G. Roy Simon as much as you can, but you still have to read the defense. And that time, Casey Printer's locked into G. Roy Simon from the beginning of the play to the end. He drew coverage. Safety Darnell Edwards was there, and Printer's basically had to just throw it away. Again, Dave Dickinson began the game for the Lions. He was injured. He engineered the first touchdown, and since then he's been on the sidelines taking notes. Second and 10 BC. Riders are fired up. And the charge is on again. Printers escapes. And he'll come up a little shy of the first down, I would think. Trevor Smith chasing him out on the far side. Printers lost his helmet. He did everything he could to get there. He dove at the end of that play, and he's going to be. Probably a couple yards, yard, long yard anyway, short. Tried to dive underneath the tackle, Travis Smith. Lost his hat, hit the ground, went for a little slide. It's like a water slide right now on Taylor Field turf. And regroup and, and see exactly how far they have to go. And wonder in this stage of the game, down by 20, what Wally Buono. Well, I think he's going for it here, yeah. Well, you're in the right end of the field, and it's it's a long two yards, maybe three. But this is probably a good time to go ahead and gamble. Final minutes, third quarter. Lions are gambling. Third down. And two of the charges on. Flag down, and I think they might have forward progress on the reception by Simon. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the call is over there because the Lions went with a bunch formation, three receivers bunched to the left side, and G. Roy Simon kind of slid underneath what offensively they would call a rub, and defensively we would call a pick. So we'll see what they call it. Saskatchewan, yeah. first down. They didn't see it either way. They call it offside Saskatchewan. Well, the flag was early, so... And that will give the BC Lions a first down. They needed three. They got five on the penalty. 
Forty three seconds. Remaining in the third quarter. Lions are down by 20. Casey Printers. Under the cover. We've got Claremont. Tough catch for Claremont. He, he had to really stretch out for that one. Enough for the first down for Jason Claremont. You know, Wally Buono and Casey Printers has lots of time. They have a whole quarter to work with, which is plenty of time for Printers to come back. Now, this drive has moved down the field, but they've had to work for almost every catch, including a third down gamble. And the gamble paid off. Second catch for Claremont. That's a first down, last play, third quarter. That'll be the touchdown toss. G. Roy Simon was wide open and trots into the end zone. So the Lions grab six back from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Hang on, folks. This one isn't over yet. You just want to come back in a game. You go to your go-to guy, G. Roy Simon. And you call it right. You gamble on third down. Wally Buono made the right call there. So Printers has a touchdown toss. Two G. big Roy. catches for G. Roy Simon. He had three, but on that gamble, they didn't have to go with the catch. They could take the penalty for the first down. And there's G. Roy over there on the bench talking to his teammates, getting them fired up. A couple of touchdown tosses for Casey Printers. And the BC Lions crawl back a little closer. It's 36 to 23 at Taylor Field. Hey, I'm trying to hide it. I'll see you with the glitch. All right. What's that? Ooh. Watch this. Glizzy gone. Okay, I see you. Oh man. Bo Lewis taking the penalty on the previous play. Illegal contact, so it'll be first down, Saskatchewan. Just shy of midfield. stands in and a heavy traffic there looking for Travis Moore. Bo Lewis was coming across trying to cover Jason French underneath and he ends up right beside Moore. He couldn't get around his teammate Baron Simpson. Baron Simpson really didn't have a guy he was standing in the middle so Lewis turned around and Baron Simpson said okay it's okay if you don't have a guy but don't be in my way and they were talking about it right after that play was over. Second and ten, Rough Riders. Leading by 13 at 36 to 23. First Reddit almost picked off, and now flags fly in the secondary. Mark Washington, that bounced right off his shoulder pads. I don't think he can get a prettier pass to him. Blitz no. comes from Ratavius Houston, but what the Lions do is rotate Mark Washington Contact back into the middle. BC 24. First down. Deshaun Austin was trailing there, gets called on pass interference. Looked. He was covering Corey Grant. So it looked questionable, but he was on the underneath coverage with Mark Washington over the top. Tried to make it look like safety Martavius Houston was blitzing, and the Lions may go back to that because it fooled Henry Burke. Hey, Red, oh, no. Huge penalty against the Lions. This drive continues a little razzle dazzle on the reverse. It's Corey Grant. Nice move on the far side. And Corey Grant taking the extension pass there. Dante Marsh making the tackle. Marcel Belfay just trying to give the BC defense a whole bunch of different looks, but they react well. Watch how the defense calls it out and then gets their proper angles. Holmes to Grant. Yeah, Mark Washington, he steps up. Now he misses the tackle, but he's in perfect position to slow Grant down. So Mar Marcel Belfay going deep into that list to find out all kinds of play. They got the double reverse going now. What's next? Net gain of four yards, second and six, Saskatchewan. Well, he has to go to page two of the list because he called a timeout. So now he has to go down and get another list. He's got some of them colored in there, some of the plays. Now, what would you be thinking? Would you be going to the yellow colors well, on you, that chart? Well, you want green for go down well, in green this Green for end. go. Green, yeah. <laughs> green for go. You're the riders. 
You know, Henry Burris hasn't run a whole bunch tonight, but he's bought time. He, he scrambled around a little bit. Not necessarily running, more scrambling. And it's created some openings for his receiver. Doesn't take off, just gets to the outside. Look at him. Bounce out to the outside, look for a guy. Remember, keep your eyes down the field. Keep your eyes down the field the whole time. Little shovel little pass shovel, inside. Yeah. Step up in the pocket outside, little shovel to Corey Grant there. And here's Burris. Travis Moore. For five. And the one run that Burris was very effective on was the touchdown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two thousand and four average rushing the football. Marcel Belfay's football team, number two in the league, 130 yards per game. Getting 130 per game, you have balanced attack. Now their problem was in the passing game. They were over only averaging 167 with Rocky Butler. That's why they're happy to see number one back at the controls. He's now the number one quarterback wearing number one. All part of the plan in Saskatchewan. The Riders really wanted to go to it in week one when Neilon Green went down, but Burris was not ready to play. Chris Sarkin. Bull in the China shop, as always, Zarka number 33. Now that's why the chess game is going on. You see B Marcel Belfe going through that list. Now what he saw was that rotation from the BC Lion defense. So he went down and he got another list out there. Now he's on page two. He's got the other one behind him there. And what he's doing now is adapting on the fly to that rotation the BC Lions are doing. And the answer is to run the football. Go! Zarka has five yards on his first carry. Burris had a breakdown there. And Brent Johnson was there and waiting. Good play from both defensive lines tonight. Brent Johnson getting involved there. And for every sack in tonight's game, Pure Later will contribute the quarterback's weight in food to the local food bank, Pure Later Canada's biggest courier company. How about Scott Schultz playing on a bad leg? Has another sack tonight, had three coming in, first in the Canadian Football League. Guts the effort from Mr. Schultz tonight. Riders will settle for a field goal try. And Paul McCallum having a fine season doing just that. 25 yarder there for McCallum. Since the dawn of game, a rivalry has divided men, and Team Smooth chooses Gillette Labs with exfoliating bar. Effortless shaving in one efficient stroke with a lifetime warranty. Choose your game face. And here is G. Roy Simon on special teams as well. And that's why Simon out across the 40 to about the 44 and there's a penalty marker well back in the Saskatchewan secondary. <laughs> penalty was against the line so they begin at the 20 and Ryan Thelwell should have made a catch. Well, that field goal by McCallum now just puts that much more pressure on Casey Printers because it's now a three score game as opposed to the two. And now it tends to, just like when you're playing golf and you're lining, lining up over that 30 foot putt for the skin, you kind of squeeze the putter a little harder than you might have had it been a five foot putt. <laughs> well put. Casey Printers has to bring it down. Now there are penalties being called, and Printers escaped. He'll have first down yardage. However, the infraction may well be against BC. Well, again, more pressure, and it looks like it's going to be in the holding area against the BC Lions, who have had all kinds of trouble with that defensive line. There's Nate Davis right there. Let's take a look at him. You got Benefield on the outside. Holding. BC 69. Three Second man rush. Lamont Bryant on the outside, number 97. And, and printers at the end of that play would be well advised to maybe slide and not take that big hit. Freddie Moore was called. And he was working on Lamont Bryant. Three man rush, five offensive linemen, 
and they have all kinds of problems and a holding call. On well, the play. they are playing a very inspired football team tonight, and little doubt that the Rough Riders should be up for this one after 12 days rest. And a little sense of urgency. There is okay. a sense of urgency. This is a team that is supposed to contend for the championship in the West, and at 0-2, they were a little nervous in Regina. Predators, nice catch as Patolo goes up. To grab that from Casey Printers, that'll be enough for the first down. And it was second and a whole bunch. Nice throw and catch from Casey Printers, but this is another example of what you see Cotolo coming down over the middle. He's going to end up coming right inside, gets around the coverage. That's his own defense, the underneath coverage, and then you have deep guys and Darnell Edwards, and he gets in between the two. Lions in a hurry up offense with the urgency here. Printers stands in. Got some pressure from Benefield and had to get rid of it in a hurry, so he'll be well short of first down yardage. Lyle Green. You know, it's not easy down there in the trenches, and, and we've said this many times. One guy who knows a little thing or two about that is sitting in our studio, and that's Chris Schultz. But Scott Schultz right now is having to take a double team, a triple team almost all game. He has a strained right calf. It's been bothering him since the first half, and that's a lot of weight leaning on him every single play. Green was the target. There was no catch, so this is second and ten. And penalty markers are down again. So is Casey Printers. Lamont Bryant yeah. jumps in there to well, see your... grab a little bit of a headline for that defensive line of Saskatchewan. Sure, and that's back to back for BC Bryant. 69. Penalties declined. Third down. Another holding call on Freddie Moore. It'll be declined. Bryant off the edge. But again, that offensive line has been so preoccupied by Nate Davis and Scott Schultz in the middle that now the ends, the outside guys, Lamont Bryan and David Benefield, are having a little more fun out there, and they're getting some more pressure. An enthusiastic crowd on hand at Taylor Field tonight with nine minutes to go. The Rough Riders have a 39-23 advantage. Flag is down as this punt dropped near the 45. Corey Holmes. And he loses yardage on the return. We'll check out the infraction and return to Taylor Field. Shop without online trackers following your every step. Switch on privacy, switch off trackers and malware. Get the special offer now at NordVPN.com. NordVPN, cybersecurity built for every day. Michael, I am offering you a chance to atone for what you have done. What exactly are you asking me to do? Tread very carefully. If we do this correctly, every single person will get what they deserve. Scott Schultz has been dynamite inside. Nate Davis as well. They've that bad calf. This is where it becomes really difficult. What does? Glenn's gladiator. Well, I'm leaning one way. I know. I, I don't, I'm not asking for, <laughs> for a scoop on this, but I'm just, oh, I'm just saying okay. it, it becomes more and more difficult. It's not. This stage of the football game. It's not over yet, but. 39-23, Saskatchewan in the lead. Casey Printers. Under pressure again, he escapes, he'll get a first down. Pays for it though, Travis really Smith. Is. Gutsy performance from Casey Printers himself. He's taking a couple of hits running through the middle like that. That's the danger zone in there. All the linebackers are flying around and Casey Printers is a big guy, he can run. Thought he 200. had the first down, but he might be a little shy here. He is 220 pounds basically, six foot two, but slide right now. That's a hit you don't have to take. You don't want to take on a middle linebacker and a defensive tackle on the same play. Wally Buono gambled before on third down. And a yard, almost two yards to go. He'll go for it again here, but this is just inches. No 
No flags. It will be a first down for the BC Lions to continue this drive. Well, 6.52 remaining fourth quarter. The Lions are down by three scores. They were two inches away and probably got three. Because that defensive line for the Riders just won't give an inch, so to speak. And they, and they really set the tone early when in short yardage they turned Casey Printers. He barely got one on a third down gamble. It is a first down. And, and it is by a couple of inches. So, okay, so they needed two. I stand corrected. They got four. Well, and it's tough when you're this far away to tell the difference between two and four inches, isn't it? <laughs> On first down, printer surrounded and wrapped up. Yeah. Yeah, and then no helmet and Nate Davis. Oh, boy. It's just... And, it, you know, it's not been pretty. It's, it's not been great swim moves from the outside or or speed around the edge or, or fancy blitzes. It's just been good, solid, hard work up front from the defensive line. They set the tone early. They've got the momentum. They kept it. Two sacks and a fumble recovery for Nate Davis. Getting that helmet back on is a bit of a test. Second and huge here for Casey Printers and the BC Lions. Printers can't find anyone on the far side. And BC will have to kick it away with just under six minutes to go in the final quarter. That one intangible, a desperate football team at 0 2, especially when you talk about the Riders, that the expectations being a home playoff game at the very least for Danny Barrett's crew. That's the goal of the Saskatchewan referendum. Yeah. I mean, past that, yes, but what the Riders have to do is try and get a home playoff game for the first time since you were a pup. Well, it's kind of like when you're out in your backyard shooting, shooting the basketball around. You got to get the first one to get started. That's when you start scoring, and they needed the first one. And from leadership from that defensive line and tremendous confidence from Henry Burris that happened in a hurry, they got it. Wally Buono needs a bunch to get back in this one, trailing 39 to 23. That last field goal by Saskatchewan means three yeah. scores necessary for the Lions here. You know, and, and don't forget early on for BC, and, and they may not look like big things at the time, but two missed field goals by Duncan O'Manny really can be demoralizing to a squad. They had a chance to keep pace early. 36 and 43 of any missed from mm -hmm. the, the, the second one a little bit longer, but that could be demoralizing for the entire team and he's been struggling. There'll be no return for Corey Holmes. Henry Burris heads out again. Feel the clarity of non-drowsy Claritin. Get relief from symptoms caused by over 200 outdoor and indoor allergens associated with types of pets, dust, and pollen. Because visiting family means making yourself at home. Feel the clarity and live Claritin clear. Michael, I am offering you a chance to atone for what you have done. What exactly are you asking me to do? Tread very carefully. If we do this correctly, every single person will get what they deserve. Saskatchewan Rough Riders and their fans they got tremendous game out of Henry Burris and they had to get it and he delivered and that you know it's one thing to go in and say hey there's pressure on the quarterback he's got to come up with a game well Henry Burris delivered and he had to be good to beat these guys tonight he yeah had to play well he did and, and he did it with his legs buying himself time use the outside receivers effectively nice game plan set up by Marcel Belfe but Burris's confidence came through and he tossed four touchdowns. 
And you know, riders content to take a little time off the clock along the ground here. You mentioned it off the top, John, about how he relishes the opportunity to have that pressure on him. I, and I think in order to play at this level, you have to feel that way as an athlete. You have to want the ball. You have to want them to throw the ball in your zone if you're playing defense, and you want it if you're the quarterback. But it's another thing to have all that pressure and come out and perform well under it. And Henry Burris did that tonight. No question about it. Burris delivered. And Keith. Helps to have Kenton Keith. He didn't have big numbers tonight. He's still trying to find his sea legs, as I mentioned. But to have him back gives Corey Holmes more of a rest. But he close to 100 yards total. He did have the touchdown when he went out in the flat on the reception. And and he just sort of got his, got back in the game. Got a feel for it again. Trying to get his win back and get in game shape. Corey Holmes gets more of a break. So that that dynamic duel between Holmes and, and Kenton Keith for Saskatchewan is going to be big improvement as the season goes on. Well, and you look at, at Corey Holmes and what he brings to the team as a fifth or sixth receiver at times and also on special teams. And Callum ends up on his backside, but the whistle had already gone as he tried his second field goal of the night. This from 31. Well, and what is it with the West Coasters? They just do not like the Prairies. The BC Lions have struggled at Taylor Field. Absolutely, and they lost all three games to Saskatchewan last year. Yeah, they did not beat the the Riders last season, and that's when Dickinson was healthy. And and the they get into Taylor Field and struggle. Saskatchewan 33, still third down. And what do you say about the Eastern Division of the Canadian Football oh, League, man. where the Ottawa Renegades lead the pack with a perfect record of three and zero after beating Edmonton tonight? Congratulations to Ottawa. Montreal in second spot. Yeah. Perfect after two games tied with Hamilton and so the East has beaten the West in eight of nine games this season up is down down is down up, is up. Front is back. Montreal consistent however Montreal is consistent and the Riders have been a model of that this evening as well when Payne says it's time to go home I say not yet. Aleve, who do you take it for? This is what we live for, isn't it? This moment. Oh my God! Now on, we be a man. Pride often comes before the fall. I won't be somebody's victim. Your problem is that you haven't got the courage for this fight. Violet! Seemed perfect to me. Let me just correct that. The East has won all games against Western competition right. this season so far, seven straight. And the only loss by an Eastern team, the Argonauts at one and one. So everybody mm -hmm. else is unbeaten on the Eastern side of the ledger. This win for Saskatchewan tonight will vault the Rough Riders all the way from last place in the division into a tie for top spot. Oh, yeah. With with the victory at one and two tied with the BC Lions and pending the outcome of Calgary's game on Sunday afternoon. Right. There's your standings. There's their your tie in BC and Calgary with Calgary playing Sunday at two points to the Saskatchewan total and you've got a three way tie at least for a bit. Here's Casey Printers 47 on the clock and Printers goes for a little sprint down the far side to about the 35 yard line. A couple of attaboys for the BC Lions offensively. Casey Printers will get an attaboy. Jason Claremont gets an attaboy. The offensive line may not like the entire tape. May not be attaboys. Not, not, not attaboys across that group, but G. Roy Simon get an attaboy there. But defensively, it's a different story. Far side catch made as Cotolo inbounds or not. He has a touchdown for the Lions. Frank Cotillo has his fourth of the season in this game tonight. 33 seconds to go. Boy, that Calgary game on Sunday is going to be an interesting one. You have Hamilton Tiger Cats. Can they keep this 
string alive. Danny McMahon is just super hot. Oh, is he ever? And they're an exciting team. I mean, they are a down the field team. McManus has thrown the deep ball a bunch in two games. Here's Casey Printers with his impression of Danny McManus. Different result in a lot of ways, but there were three Rough Riders back in coverage there. Another play made by the defense, not necessarily a mistake by the offense. And that's been the story tonight. Not really a whole bunch of mistakes from Casey Printers and the BC Lion offense. As Printers reacts to that play by Eddie Davis and Darnell Edwards down the field. It's been big plays from the Saskatchewan defense starting with the guys up front. Just 26 seconds to go. On a Wendy's Friday night, Taylor Field, Regina. It's been an enjoyable game. Kennedy stumbles, and that was enough hesitation for David Benefield to rack him up. Uh, Benefield, Benefield gets on the board. He has an interception coming into this game, but he didn't have his first quarterback sack wearing a green jersey. Whole bunch of sacks, in fact, 72 of them in his career for David Benefield. But that's the first one as a Saskatchewan Rough Rod. Had nine last season wearing blue and gold. It doesn't really affect the outcome, but. It does keep David Benefield tuned into the games, game films in practice tomorrow because yep. it's right near the end. <laughs> yeah. he, he just, he's going to be awake for the entire process. Go! Nice evening for Henry Burris and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Henry wanted the ball, and Henry delivered four touchdown tosses in this one. And it was as importantly the lack of mistakes. Rocky Butler had thrown six interceptions in two games. Henry Burris comes in with four TDs, does not make a whole bunch of mistakes. And that, you know, that can change the flow of a game in a hurry, too. He didn't make any. Well, and it changes the mood of this city, this franchise, this team. Henry Burris on the board. And Danny Barrett's going to have a pretty nice evening and a, and a lovely Canada Day weekend, don't you think? Touchdown!